don't know who you're pointing at. Both. Okay, I'll go. I just uh, have a smiley bit. My name's Robert Bendel. I'm the psychology technician at Salford in the School of Health Sciences. Most of my teaching usually revolves around biological psychology, research methods, and neuroscience. Um, at the moment, I've got a session coming up in a couple of weeks where I'm actually hopefully going to give some students who are in their final year the skills to use our participant management tool, which will hopefully save them a lot of time and enables them to recruit participants to their dissertation, which is obviously very important. If you don't have any participants, if you don't have any data, if you don't have any data, if you don't have a dissertation, then you don't have a degree. So I think it's very important. However, it can be quite a dry session and the problem I sometimes face is getting across how this tool can save a lot of, lot of time and effort to students who are maybe not so enthralled about another thing they need to use the computer. Okay? So my intervention was a calculator. Okay? The idea being here, I would break the group down into two groups, give them a mathematical task, but only one of those groups gets to use the calculator, which would hopefully have two kind of thought processes for them. One, a calculator with one scary life computer, hopefully it shouldn't be any more. And the second, that if you use the right technology, it will be able to save them an awful amount of time, effort and stress during their dissertation. Thank you. Uh, hello, welcome to the show. I'm Helen and I teach radio at uh, Media City to undergraduates. Now, the big problem I've got is that it's a lot about news. And uh, first of all, getting people to even young people to engage with news can be quite problematic itself. So once I've done that, they then go away and they write a piece of news. And the next stage, and the problem I came across is how do I get them to read it as a sort of journalist? because it's all about voice and vocal technique and the one thing I discovered about young people is that they kind of talk in this very monotone sort of flat thing so how do I get them to, to, to read this and say well look this is a story this is about telling a story so I thought great get them to actually read a story so the thing about a book like this when I'm reading it to, to the kids and to my nieces and nephews is that they all make me put on Voice. So I thought, great, okay, so we get a book that's full of characters, and you've got Woody and you've got Buzz Lightyear, and they've got a, you know, give it up, Bart, Woody calls. You've reached the end of the line. So I get to do an activity where they're all coming out with silly voices to get the idea of storytelling and, and how important it is to put the drama, you know, within an unbiased way in news, but put the drama into telling the story, and they can link it with something that they've, that they've had already as children and that we all do. So that's, that's my solution. Toy Story, would you believe? And um, we worked quite well together, didn't we? I think so. It was fun. Yes. It was fun. Helen certainly helped me progress my idea forward and come up with some other suggestions that I could possibly use. Yeah, in fact we came probably with too many suggestions, didn't we? Yeah. And we were just limited on money, really. That was it. We needed lots of money because we had lots of ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.